Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Greatness Engineering Hour show. But today we're continuing the series on Unshakable Faith Anthology book. I have uh, one of the co-authors today as a guest, and uh, you, you have the opportunity to learn about the chapter and also understand how, you know, she view the unshakable faith and how she managed to build the unshakable faith based on any, you know, any uh, a journey, professional and, and personal. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to learn from her today and uh, and and ask question if you if you're watching live and for those who are going to watch the replay obviously you know put your questions or your insight on the comment we will address them later so my name is Mireille, Mireille Tulekima tuning in from Perth Australia and uh, the the show is brought to you by the Miracle Human Global Leadership Organization, and we have the support of uh, some of uh, you know some of our sponsor, the STEM Queen, the Wedo Africa, and the G100 supporting us here. And of of you see the Miracle Human Global Leadership putting it all together. So who is uh, who is um, the you know the guest today? Just gonna show you a picture, and then you get you know the opportunity to see her uh, through you know your uh, screen. So her name is Serena Moody. She's uh, she's a professional school counselor, and like I said, she's one of the co-author of Unshakable Faith uh, anthology book. And the book will be published on the 23rd of June, and we are very excited about it. So without further ado, we will start our conversation with uh, Sarita and know exactly more, know more about chapter. Obviously, we're not going to tell you everything, but at least the essential for you to to get the appetite and to get to get the book when it comes out. So get you know get ready have your pen and paper as usual to take notes because there's always so much to learn from and uh, and and be ready to participate Another episode of the Greatness Engineering Hour show, the show that is brought to you by the Virai Telekima Global Leadership Organization. What real is important is if you just look at the word compassion, when uh -huh. it's behavior, it's something that can be learned and it is something that we can embody through habits and through our daily actions. To get this idea that if we interject this wisdom intentionally, mm -hmm. uh, it is, it, I call them needle movers. It's the needle mover that's missing. Um, don't deprive the world of your greatness. Mm -hmm. Don't do that anymore. You know, dare to excel, dare to be sexy, dare to be you, dare to be the best version of yourself. Uh, impact yourself positively and for, from there impact others and you are not alone.
welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. It is, uh, it is, you know, a special show today. We're going to talk about uh, unshakable faith. And today I have uh, as a guest one of the co author Sarita Moody. And welcome, welcome, Sarita, to the show. We, I'm so excited to know more about, you know, your contribution to the book. And, uh, and, and, and also, in a way, you know, take some nuggets to go and, you know, convince people to really buy the book. So before we get to, you know, understand a little bit more how you came into, you know, participating into the project and what, you know, you, 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 you're going to, you know, the message that you... You got to give to the, the to introduce yourself to the audience and let us know who you are. Well, first, I want to say, Moran, thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, it's just such a wonderful honor and privilege to be able to be on a platform like this and um, share my experiences that that God has brought me through and um, <clears throat> and just be a part of this uh, beautiful anthology with so many powerful um, writers such as yourself. And uh, and and um, I'm just really excited to be here. Um, just a little bit about me. My name is Sarita Moody. And I am the CEO of Special Hands Outreach. It's a um, mental health facility that uh, it, it's, a, it's an online service that I provide for um, coaching, counseling, mentoring, and consultation. Um, this is my first authoring. Um, however, I am working on another project. They link together from this. And, um, mm -hmm. and I do do motivational speaking to uh, single mothers. And um, that was my, my, my trade call up until I married. Uh, and so and uh, I like to talk about those, those struggles and to help young mothers really get through those times. Um, and I'm also a professional school counselor. And so mm -hmm. I really love what I do. Um, a lot of what I do uh, is service, and um, I believe it all is uh, inclusive of my ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what's, I mean, what led you to, because you said it's your first, you know, uh, you know, collaboration anthology. So what led you to actually participate in this great project? What, you know, how did it, you, you know, how did it come uh, to you and how, you know, did you say, okay, this is the project where I want to be? Honestly, it was really interesting. Uh, you know, two of my sisters were in the first anthology um, um, and um, Empowered to Win was the first mm -hmm. book that um, um, Alice and Daniels um, put out. Um, well, it wasn't the first of Alice and Daniels, but it was the first book that I was made aware of that my sisters participated in. And I didn't feel led by God to participate. I really support it. But when I found out that Allison was doing another book mm -hmm. um, called Unshakable Faith, the Lord prickled my heart. He said, oh, this is the time. And um, it was because in my family, I'm, I've been, I'm kind of like that proverbial kid that believes everything always. And so faith mm -hmm. has always been my anchor. And mm -hmm. so sharing my sto my stories through um, what I've been through as raising six kids on my own and just the journey of making mistakes and having mm -hmm. to clean them up. Um, my my faith in God had a lot to do with that. And mm -hmm. so I, I wanted to share. Fantastic. And we have Alison is here today. Hey, Alison, thank you for uh, tuning in. And uh, thank you for, you know, the vision, because we are all here because of you. It yeah. is fantastic to see that. So one question, because, you know, when we when people talk about, you know, faith and uh, so and now we, we're basically talking about unshakable faith. So what is and you know, what does it mean to have unshakable faith for you? Because I can imagine it's a personal you know, it's it's something personal. But for you, what does it mean to have unshakable faith? Um, it's just no doubt. It's it's a it's a knowing mm -hmm. without doubt. Um, it 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 may look a certain way. For me, it looks like a knowing, just a constant, continual knowing. When you have mm -hmm. nothing else, when you are um, doubting everything else. 
that's mm-hmm. the one thing you can't doubt. I mean, for me, it's just no doubt. Just trust mm-hmm. God. Period. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And that's and that's the important thing because sometimes we ask ourselves so many questions, but it's also good to just you know trust and say okay. I don't want to ask, you know, too many questions. I know that, you know, God is here. God is leading me. And I don't have to question that. It's mm-hmm. there. It's a given. Yeah. And uh, that's just the way it is. And, mm-hmm. you know, and and it's it's very important in, though, in, in, in difficult time. I mean, you just mentioned that you, you know, you had to raise your children on your own, six children. And so how do you rely on your faith, you know, during hard times, you know, is there, you know, a particular process, a particular, you know, particular thought that you process that you go through? How, how does it materialize? Well, I think for me, um, it materialized in the choices that I made. Um, Mm -hmm. um, and now I use that as a barometer, um, Mm -hmm. And the choices that you make decide what your next abyss is going to be or your mm-hmm. next blessing is going to be, right? Do you have to claw mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. out of that decision or do you have to, um, you know, are you going to be blessed because it was a good decision? So I think sometimes that free choice and free will that God gives us mm-hmm. uh, may not be such a good thing depending on how we are. Um, making our choices. And if we mm-hmm. are making choices without his guidance, without the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, I mean, you can you can mess up some things for some years, mm-hmm. you know, and you can go down directions and roads that have you in more of a struggle portion of your life than you, than you wanted it to be uh, for yourself. And so I think, mm-hmm. I think re- reflection and being honest, self-awareness is really important. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. to establishing um, better choice choices that we make and and leaning on the Lord for our, our choices because we can't mm-hmm. do it all on our own. You know, we I, I think that's like going blindly into the world, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's what we do all the time. Unfortunately, we, we just, you know, we, we just fell. And we have to go back to the drawing board and, you know, and, and trust God. Amen. And that's the, that's really the, you know, the process that we need, we need to go through. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of noise as well, because, you know, what, uh, you know, what we going, you know, what's going on. And then you have the family and then you have the friend judging you or you can do, do it on your own. There's the competitive environment and, my question is, how do you preserve your faith in such a, you know, a noisy world, uncertain world, and people just, you know, always talking over you, wanted to direct your life? So how do you preserve your faith in such a, you know, in such a noisy and very difficult and challenging world? That's a really good question. Um, I would say for me, um, during that time, I-, I allowed myself to be hurt. You know, I allowed mm-hmm. myself to cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to mm-hmm. to snot on the floor and get it all out you know, <laughs> to mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. and you know I I was very very transparent with God about my pain mm-hmm. and that's hard sometimes you know mm-hmm. hard for us to be truly honest with ourselves mm-hmm. to be even honest with our family members to be honest with you know whatever loved ones are around us um, I think. Um, at the same time, realizing though, you know, his God's word mm-hmm. and, and prayer, a lot of prayer. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah. and I say it's, it's a conversation. So I, I, I say prayer, but I talk to God all the time, like I'm talking to you. So, mm-hmm. and, and, but it is prayer. It is, um, you know, trusting his word and, and knowing his perspective on things. Um, mm-hmm. If you really, if you really go into His Word, you'll see that you're not the only one that's gone through things that you've been through. It does give you some peace and solace to see how God dealt with it, and the same God that that you know brought whoever out of that situation is the same God that will bring you out of yours. And so we do have mm-hmm. a map, we have a guide, and I think that it it needs to be used uh, as much as we don't want to sit down and read it, but. 
um, it, it is pertinent in these times. But mm-hmm. you know, what I've learned is to stay ahead and be preemptive in my word so that uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to come to my word now and saying, OK, where is it? You know, and, mm-hmm, and now mm-hmm. I'm in panic mode, you know, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It, it definitely has taught me a different kind of discipline. Definitely. Definitely. And, and, and I like the fact that you are saying that, you know, we have, we have a map, but sometimes we don't want to read this map. It's there, it's ready for us, but we, we choose to look elsewhere and say, okay, this is not for me. I'm going to my own path. I'm going to create my own map. And little that we realize that, oh, we get lost. So it's like, no, no, no way go back so it's yeah. uh, it's really you know what we we go through so let's have a break and uh, just want to say hi to um uh dr supriya dr supriya thank you thank you for tuning in she's tuning in from india thank you for tuning in and uh, i hope that you enjoying the conversation that i'm having with uh, sarita and please, you know, uh, you know, give us, you know, your insight or uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions. So we're going to have a break and we will be back for, uh, you know, for this very insightful and, and, uh, and inspiring conversation that I'm having with uh, uh, Sirita. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes. I'm back with Sarita as my guest, and we're talking about uh, unshakable faith. And uh, as you've seen from the video, the book is coming out pretty soon in three weeks. On so you know, uh, watch this space. We'll let you know how you can get you know get the book and uh, and learn from us from a story and of uh, and we hope that it's going to help you to build up your faith and to to get closer to god so one you know one question that i have obviously we're, we're going to talk about the book so what your i mean what's the title of a chapter and what do you expect you know uh, what what is the key message that you want to to get through to the reader so the title of my book i mean my chapter it's called trauma validated in christ Mm -hmm. And yes, I know it sounds very much like an oxymoron. (laughs) When I first (laughs) wrote it, I thought to myself, "Um, that's kind of crazy, but okay." I wanted to see where really God was taking me with it. Um, Mm -hmm. And 
trauma validated in Christ basically is just um, a way of saying that God has allowed stuff. You know, the Bible says that God allows uh, things to happen in your life uh, with a purpose. And so when you uh, when you realize that you're going through something that seems like a traumatic experience um, and, and the question of that many people ask is why? Why? Why me, God? Why? Why am I? And we do that victimization type of uh, questioning yeah. to the Lord. Um, however, um, I would I would offer a redirection of your thinking um, and and really trying to see, OK, what am I supposed to be learning in this moment? Because God said he would never give us more than we can bear. He's allowing this thing to happen to me. My emotions are traumatized. But mm -hmm. spiritually, what is God trying to birth? Is what is he trying to mold? What is he trying to purge? You know, and all of those things are things to think about when you are going through things in life that seem more than you can bear. Mm -hmm. um, however, if God allowed it, he knows you. He created you. He predestinated you. And so... Um, you can do it, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can get through it. And so it, it requires that redirection of thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this redirection of thinking is, uh, is very important because sometimes when something happened to us, it, we go direct on, you know, like you said, why me? And, uh, and sometimes, you know, if we redirect our thinking, like, you know, asking the right questions that just, the, you know, the one that you mentioned, we realize that it's actually a blessing in disguise. We have to go through this trauma, through this challenge, through this, you know, failure to be able to get to the point, uh, to the next level level to the next point this map because and that it, we come back to this map that we sometimes just want to ignore there is a map and we we we, we have a certain journey you know a, a certain journey to travel Absolutely. and uh, and we you know those trauma actually are you know checkpoints and reminder that hey you know you're on the wrong you know you you you're going on the you know on the wrong path so yeah this is redirecting you so that you can you know uh, again, come back to this map that was designed for you. Absolutely. So that's uh, that's very important. But how did you, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, you, you you don't know, you know, you didn't know about the map. So how did you develop your own, you know, unshakable faith, you know, knowing all of this, knowing that, you know, all these challenges that were, you know, coming to you were you know, a way to read it uh, and, and actually to the right path and was something that you had to go through. But at which point did you realize that that was, you know, the case? Honestly, there's no easy way to respond to this because most people don't want to hear in this world, we want a microwave solution, but mm -hmm. it is through trial and error. You know, mm -hmm. when you're, when you go through things, you're actually going to have to go through some things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think God designed that to be on the job training. Our lives as believers in Christ is an on the job training. And mm -hmm. you know, if you ask God for more wisdom, he's going to put situations in front of you where you're going to have to make good choices. Um, mm -hmm. If you ask God for more patience, he's going to give you situations that's going to test your patience. Um, mm -hmm. If you ask God for uh more peace, right? Then he's going to give you situations that are crazy and chaotic so that he can teach you how to be peaceful in the moment. I think mm -hmm. about when Jesus was um, on the Sea of Galilee with his, with his disciples and this huge storm is coming and they're freaking out letting it go, but Jesus is sleeping. He has peace. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that was uh, trial and error. You know, they, he said, and, and, and Jesus said, Oh, ye of little faith. Why, why don't you believe, you know, I mean, 21 mm -hmm. foot waves are coming and, <laughs> and these are, yeah, skilled, yeah, yeah, yeah. these are skilled sailors and they're freaking out, letting it go. Um, and he's saying, you know, these situations are the things that teach us. And as mm -hmm. we get through a circumstance, and we say, wow, I had, and you come out of a thing, like you said, you come through a thing and you look around and you say, oh my gosh, I came out of that. Ah! Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, you start mm -hmm. to learn the character of God and, and how he operates with you. 
and it builds up what I like to call spiritual muscles, <laughs> your, mm -hmm, your mm -hmm, immunities mm -hmm. to circumstances in life. And so trial and error, I think, um, I think that we should fall. Mm -hmm, we should, mm -hmm. should mess up. And we, mm -hmm. and, and just how bad that's going to be depends on how stubborn we are. You know, faith was never an issue for me. Obedience was an issue for me. <laughs> and so I had to go around the mulberry bush a few times before I got the, 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 the due results God wanted to get through me. Um, mm -hmm. because I was pretty hard headed. And yeah, so mm. my suggestion is don't be hard headed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too late. A lot of us are out of edit and uh, we need this, you know, hammer to come back to us and all those, you know, uh, difficult moments in our life to know that, okay, it's time to, you know, to to submit ourselves to obedience and, and just follow what that's had been already designed. That's uh, that's that's just you know human human nature. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, how does the you know uh, your faith and what you've you know you've you've learned you know uh, about faith help you in your in your work because you're dealing you know you're counseling people you know children you're dealing with parents so it's quite a you know it's quite an important job. So how is it helping you? in, you know, getting your message through and empowering, you know, uh, the children that you're counseling? How, how, how do you think it's helping you? Well, it definitely does help. I mean, so when you, when you are, when your thinking has been redirected and you're more, um, I would say, plugged into um, the guidance of, of the Holy Spirit, um, your, the way you do things, the way you communicate with students, the way you communicate with parents or clients alike, it your whole thought process gets redefined because you're constantly always um, trying to seek the Lord in how to deal with and function through a circumstance that's brought to you. Um, mm -hmm. For me, when I deal with students, I'm always in communication with the Lord about making sure that I'm taking the necessary steps for this particular child. Everybody is different. Um, the discernment is definitely one of the things that God gives us as a natural gift to all believers. And, and that's one of the ways you are, are having to um, sometimes um, read the parent, um, defuse a circumstance, um, try your best to operate within transparency and and the love of God. People can see your truth, your you, your compassion, your empathy, and this is what Je what Jesus did. This is what he wanted. This is how he behaved. We are his direct representation, and so um, I think that that's how that's the mantra that I walk through. When I'm dealing with any of my clients, if I'm consulting or if I'm dealing with parents, even coworkers, you know, this is this is what my my everyday looks like when I am working on um, assisting children, parents, or or clients. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's that's important. I think it's uh, to always put God first, and uh, you know, so is guidance. Um, and and because it's uh, you know, it's it can be challenging, especially in this world where uh, there's a lot of um, you know distraction for children. Uh, you know, you have the TV, you have all kind of things. You have the internet, you have the parents, you have the friends so it, it can be very heavy for a lot of them and uh, one question that i have is you know um when dealing with youth because you know um a lot of them question you know even the faith question god question so how do you manage that because i, I you know i have young adults in in my family and sometimes it, it is difficult you know to um to make them understand the importance of going you know putting God first in their life because of, of the dis, what they, you know, in platforms. So how do you reconcile that, you know, as you deal with, you know, schools and, and, and especially 
uh, you know, children and young adults? Well, I try my best to model the behavior um, mm -hmm. that I am suggesting of my students. Um, mm -hmm. I don't particularly preach to them, uh, but I do try to sow nuggets of moral moral judgment, decision making, and also I utilize choices that they make. A lot of times when the students come to me, if it's not something that's an emotionally sensitive thing, it's because they've made a decision that now we have to reflect upon. And I am the person that's trying to get them to think about other ways they could have made a choice. So I utilize the circumstances for which they have gotten themselves into and model that um, for learning about better, better, better decision making. Um, mm -hmm. Cause at the end of the day, and, and then also gets getting to the root of the intention, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people I don't believe are naturally evil. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that there are things that are inside of us that trigger us, that provoke us, maybe experiences or, you know, other things. And so one of the things I do try to do with my students and clients is get to the bottom or the root of what really is, um, um, the issue, what is really mm -hmm. the cause of the action that you took? Why, why do you feel so defensive when someone stares at you? You know, I'm, I'm this is elementary kids now. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but why do you feel so defensive? Why, why do you want what they were just looking? Maybe they think you're pretty, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. you know. And thinking, you know, trying to change their thinking about, but I thought they wanted to fight me, you know, or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. this is elementary. And, um, and so, that's that's how I, I address it all. But each each person, each child is different. Um, but mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that I do is I try to walk them through their decision making and model mm -hmm. the behaviors that I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And and you have to, I mean, you, you have to do what you preach. I think that's uh, that's what it is, is that you can't try to uh, you know, um, see, help them and talk about faith, and you're not actually, you know, representing that yourself. And and you you have you know they can only believe what they see, and that's what I I you know I realize with this generation Absolutely. that Absolutely. they only believe what they see. So as you say, as you said, you have to model it, and then they can they can easily follow. So I just want to say hi to Selena. Hey, Selena, thanks for tuning in. Selena is tuning in from, I think, New Jersey, if I remember uh, very well. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't hesitate to uh, participate. I know it's your, it's your subject, so uh, we will, you know, we, we will welcome uh, your input here. So uh, we will have another break, and we will be back uh, with uh, uh, Serena again. And uh, and continue this uh, this great conversation that we've we've started. So don't go anywhere. We'll uh, we will be back in few minutes.
So we are back. We are back with Sarita. We're talking about uh, unshakable faith. And we are, you know, discussing, you know, trying to understand a Sarita chapter called True Christ. And I hope that you've got, you know, the initial, uh, you know, nuggets that she's talked about and the initial uh, you know, and that you're captivated and you're going to be ready, ready, and you're getting ready to buy the book when it comes out on the 23rd of June. That's, uh, that's, the, day, that's the day that we're going to publish this amazing anthology. So just to, you know, continue our conversation, how can people, you know, build up uh, their faith from your chapter. I mean, especially I'm talking about two kind of people. First, the one that actually don't believe, and you know, the next category is the one that still who are still you know unsure and and you know in in the middle. So how can they you know uh, get you know read this chapter and and uh, and build up their faith um, through okay. that. Again, um, I, I can't stress enough being, you know, honest with oneself, transparent with themselves and really just reflecting on reflection is a big thing. You know, looking back on um, life choices and the outcomes thereof, how did I get here? Um, I, I can't say that all traumas come from your choices. I mean, there are things that were not that are not in your control, um, but you do have the power to um, pull yourself out of those um, things, but that is with assistance and help. You know, I, I know that a lot of people do not believe in uh, uh, mental health, therapy, counseling, but these things matter. Um, we are skilled in what we do. God has blessed us with a gift to support um, individuals, to, to walk them through whatever they've uh, experienced in their past, to be able to and that's what I was going to say, dealing with things. A mm -hmm. lot of people like to shove things under the rug and, and not deal with them. They have to mm -hmm. be acknowledged first. It has to be dealt with. And, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do it because if I do, I won't be able to go through my daily day. Uh, just imagine. Mm -hmm. and but, but, but that's causing a lot of spillover into your life, how you feel, how you trust, um, maybe the, the lack of moving forward. Um, there's so many different red flags that you could probably see in your life that has to do with things that you have not uh, chosen to deal with. And so God mm -hmm. has a lot of assistive measures to help you, but you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be transparent with you. So you got to mm -hmm. be aware, acknowledge that. That's the first thing. And the second thing is um, deal with them. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Find, a, find a, a therapist or you know, it, it, they have Christian counseling too. If you are a non-believer, if you're a believer, um, those things are tools here set to help you and assist you. Now, I have to say, you got to be really, um, really intentional about the type of therapy you get and mm -hmm. who you get. And I wouldn't just land on the first one. Um, you got to make sure that it's going to be um, and, and pray about it, that God leads mm -hmm. you to the right person that's going to help walk you through getting out um, whatever it is in there that needs to come out so that you can move in to um, that different place. You know, that, that's the redirection that I talk about. And then, and then while you're in that process, redefining, you know, who you are and what this means to you now, you know, once you are dealing with this, healing from it, now you're this new person. You don't have to wear that coat or that scarf or those pants or those sh or the shirt of whatever the trauma that you've experienced that has hindered you from moving forward in your life or has uh, trusting people or whatever whatever the whatever whatever has happened that has uh, stopped you from feeling like a whole complete full person in in happiness um, yeah it's gonna it's gonna require you to to do some some inward inward looking. And, and honesty and emotional work. Yeah, it's going to be some emotional work required. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and it's just to say that, you know, it comes down to, you know, you, you kind of, the, the problem of the trauma is not just going to disappear. No. You know, it starts with you 
being proactive Absolutely. and uh, and and taking the right measure and if, identify the gaps because uh, obviously you can't you can you can't actually manage everything yourself so yeah. identify the gaps so, so you can bring the right resources to you know to 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 fill those gaps and Absolutely. help you to to get out of the trauma. Mm -hmm. So we have Lilian. Lilian is uh, is watching from Switzerland. Hey Lilian, great Hello. to have you here. And she has uh, her remark. I think we all different and we deal with trauma differently. What works for one might not work for the the other. Absolutely. I personally dealt with. Uh, my last trauma by going inward, I kind of find peace inward and accepted that uh, this, that was the situation. And that's the and that's what it, it is, uh, Lilian. It's personal. It's personal, but it require you to know know yourself. Like you know, uh, I was saying, you have to know yourself. You have to identify it. And then Absolutely. deal with it. So the, the the action is not up to you. For you, it was inward. For other people, they might need assistance. Yeah. And uh, and that's uh, that's really the, the the important thing. And I have Selena here, uh, from you know, uh, fragmentation to oneness. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know that's uh, that's powerful. Absolutely. And uh, Lilian again, I've gone through so much that I kind of depend on myself. But I'm also lucky to have a great source of network around me. Yes, right. and, uh, and and that's uh, the support system is important. You have to create this the support system that you 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 know that you need. You might think that you're strong, but you always you know want to have this support system that you want to you know to fall on. And that's uh, that's an important step. So we we'll have another break and. Um, I uh, I will ask you my favorite question that you know I, I always you know ask uh, my guest and uh, and there's it's always you know it's always a beautiful uh, there's always beautiful answers and uh, I I think it's going to be the same today so let's have this last break and we will be back with you. back we are back with Sarita and the question that I love asking you know all my guests is Sarita what is the legacy that you want to leave you know with you know you went through all you know those challenges raising your six children on your own uh, going through different tra trauma now supporting your children counseling them and parents who sometimes don't speak the same language as as you so what's next what is the legacy that you want to leave as Sarita? um i guess ultimately a legacy of um wholeness um you know inspiration motivation encouragement um these are the things that when we're going through um, maybe very hard to uh, receive, get, um, and you never know what one little thing you could have said just by being there and listening could have been the thing that helped someone get over the hump through whatever traumatic or difficult circumstances they may be experiencing. I think the legacy that I like to leave is that no one is perfect. We all make mistakes, um, but but because we're here still alive, we're able to um, intentionally uh, be present to correct those mistakes. 
Um, I think that having the Lord lead and guide us is a gift, a blessing, and it's a tool that we should use on a regular basis, not just when we are going through, because uh, when it's when it's bad, it's bad. And we want to call on the Lord. But when it's good, I don't know if he hears from us so much, you know, mm -hmm. so a regular practice, but ultimately whole spiritual, mental, emotional health um, that you have a, a longer life expectancy, that you have better relationships with your family and new friends and that you're able to communicate to people how you feel comfortably uh, without um, feeling isolated and mm -hmm. um, alone. And uh, because this is a really big world and um, and there are still a lot of very good people in it. Fantastic. And Lilian has a question. Um, she's um, she she want, she she's asking, do you wonder how you know different your life would have been if that one thing, that incident or that challenge wouldn't have happened? I used to think about that all the time, Lillian. And um, I just think to myself, um, we can we can we can talk about what it would have been, but I always believe that there's always gonna be some way that we're challenged in decisions that we make. But one of the things I love about God is that He works your good and your bad decisions out for our good. So I'm just blessed that He can, you know clean up my situation and I'm, I'm totally in a better situation now. Um, however, yeah, I mean, I, I could have not made those bad decisions and been in a better place too. But my question about that is would I have still learned, would I still have the measure, you know, going through gives you this, this wisdom that you gain to be able to, um, remember how to how to sow seeds another way so what i've learned i've not only given to my kids i've given to other loved ones and you know people around me i think it's our experiences that um allow us to be able to walk in that wisdom um and and teach others um how to not fall into the the abyss so um, I can't say that I regret the path when I was going through it. Absolutely, I did. Um, now that I'm on the other side of it, um, I can see the purpose in it. And um, and I'm just using that purpose for God's glory. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, and, and I see that Selena just summarized it, you know, just beautifully inside a, a tragedy there's a gift we must find it Absolutely. so yes selena mm -hmm. oh there's always a gift in through uh it can be painful at you know at some time but less you know it's it's always good to be hopeful and and understand that behind you know this uh, this tragedy beyond this obstacle beyond this challenge beyond this failure there's a gift that we, you know, we 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 can find that we have waiting for us, and it's our, you know, it's our duty to just find it and yeah. and and go for it. So um, again, Lilian, I believe life is like a coin, uh, both in good times and challenging times. That's how. Uh, you know, I sum it up. Yes. And when those good days come, I rejoice. And when those bad days come, then we find a way to hold on and learn from it. Fantastic, Lilian. Good, you know, uh, good su summary. And uh, unfortunately, we have to, you know, we have to stop the conversation, but it has been very inspiring and, and, uh, and, and engaging as well, because uh, the audience has, you know, participated and helped us to progress the conversation. Just before we leave, uh, you know, Serena, how can people connect with you if they want to know more about your chapter in this anthology or just know more about what you do and the services that you offer, or just the work, you know, the impact of the work that you, you're doing 
uh, you know, um, in, in the U.S.? Okay, so I'm Special Hands Outreach mm -hmm. is um, on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you can go to specialhandsoutreach.org. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my website. Um, still getting it up and running, but it's, it's a good enough information on there and ways to get in contact with me uh, for any of the viewers. Mm -hmm. So uh, any, any, you know, last message that you want to leave to us before, you know, before we close out on, on this uh, beautiful conversation? I just want to say that, you know, when you're going through what you've been through in your life, don't think it as a situation that is um, bad. Just chalk it up as something that is par for the course for your future and that mm -hmm. God is going to use to birth out of you. There's always purpose. God allows these things for a reason and he knows you can do it. He believes in you and so do I. So believe in yourself. Huh. So believe in yourself. Everything happens for a reason. And if it happens to you, it's because God knows that you are strong enough to go through it. And there's always a gift, like, you know, Selena was saying, there's always a gift behind, you know, this tragedy of this, you know, uh, experiences that you're going through and learn from it. That's Lilian, learn from it. Mm -hmm. When it happened, it's a, it's a lesson. So learn from it. Absolutely. So it has been, and, uh, and also, so we have uh, uh, the visionary of this book, uh, great show ladies, thanks, thanks Alison for the vision, thanks for bringing us together to bring those powerful messages and share our stories, you know, our stories of triumph and our story of unshakable faith and share it with the world and empowering in the process of, uh, you know, across the world so thank you so much to the audience it you know it, it has been beautiful to to just get your your insight your, in, your input it's been valuable to the conversation and i've learned so much as well from you and uh, lilian thank you very much as well and uh, and for your wisdom as well because we, we you. could you know learn from it and so just have you know a blessed day or a blessed night wherever you are blessed afternoon and uh, i will be back uh with another episode of the greatness engineering our show on friday and it's gonna be a very interesting one because i'm gonna i'm gonna have as a guest a young um south african 11 year, years old, he's a farmer, he has his own farm, wow. and I will have, I will uh, talk to him, his mom will be, you know, also with him, but I will talk to him and, uh, and understand, you know, how he became one of the, the youngest farmer in South Africa. Wow. So until then, you know, have a great day and oh, be blessed.